After a few months of a lot of labor and a lot of love, the new game room is finally complete. It's time to show it off. The door is a bunch of beer signs. Gets you hyped, gets you ready for freaking retro video games and beer. Been asking for it. We've been in this new game room for, I don't know, maybe about a month. Let's take a look inside. So when you first walk in, you know, you close the door, you keep the sound down. We got our channel goals. This is really important. It keeps us motivated, keeps us on track to do things. It's nice that we're, it's actually visible in the old game room. It was behind the wall, so I'd always forget about it. I mean, also this wallpaper, we gotta talk about this real quick. We did this ourselves and it was a pain in the ass. It's self-adhesive, but I think it just gives it a cool, um, game room or arcade vibe. So I really like that. It doesn't always line up the best because factory manufacturer it wasn't my fault I promise you that but we're still on the walls you don't notice it so don't even comment about it because it's annoying but we did all the trim ourselves which is badass you know we framed out the door then we got some freaking posters over here which is awesome I love that we put posters on the side of this entertainment stand so when you walk in you literally see posters and you're like okay let's go you get this freaking badass Brett the Hitman Hart jersey with some other knickknacks and then speaking of wrestling we got some WWF WWE Superstars figures. It's a new line that Mattel has. I like it. It's kind of a mix between the Hasbros and Masters of the Universe figures. Um, so I think those are pretty cool. And I love how they fit perfectly above the door. Things just work out, you know, it's just, it's great. We just added this lamp and I do love it. I do, it gives it a cool vibe. Gives it like an underground basement vibe. We got some Game Boy stuff here. This is a, a nail polish shelf uh, that we repurposed into a Game Boy game shelf. I got that idea from Captain Algebra, not my own idea. But I took some Nintendo Power ads and stuff like that and put it on the back. I really like how that turned out. We got more stuff to put on the walls eventually, but we're kind of just, we're waiting to see what we want to like put up and everything. So, you know, game rooms, they never fully get finished. So it's like kind of a work in progress, but this is like what we have for now. As we continue our journey, we can get to the NES stuff here. Some CIB NES consoles. There's some more across the way as well we'll get to. I didn't have room for all my complete box consoles, believe it or not. Bigger game room, but I don't have room for certain things. I didn't want it to be super cluttered. NES display, I love the shelf, how it just, it's like the tower of power, but for Nintendo. <laughs> like, it's pretty badass. And then um, this shelf was in the old game room. You know, we got wrestling, Batman, turtles, huge nostalgia stuff. It's nice that this is also on display and I like the lights helps give it a cool glow. Get into some Hasbro stuff over here as well. Um, if you've been following the channel, you know I'm a huge uh, old school wrestling Hasbro fan. So we got our Hasbro stuff over here. And then right when you walk in too, we have this metal beam support that works out perfect as a little shelf. So got a lot of CIB stuff um, up there. It's pretty freaking badass. We're gonna try and start like once we know Death Run games, put the CIB stuff up there and build like little shrines and stuff. But for now, we just kind of filled it up. It's so cool because when you walk in, you're just like, okay, let's freaking go. Then we move on. We have an arcade one up. I don't 
particularly love the thing, but uh, I still think it's one of the best ones they put out because you have the three or four games, rather, on the singular cabinet, where a lot of them just have one game. All right, so as we work our way this way, the room is kind of set up in two areas. We got the retro studio side, which we'll get to in a little bit. That's like the backdrop and where you see everything. And then like the modern side and like the hangout side. So now we're kind of in the retro studio side. This is freaking badass because this is all the retro stuff. And in the old game room, we had retro and modern mixed together, hooked to both these TVs. Now it's just retro. So we have two CRT TVs. We will do a tech review um, of our setup in a different video, so I'm not gonna get super into the weeds, but we'll, we'll kind of glaze over it so you, you have an idea how things are set up. But anyway, we have a Sony Trinitron TV here, and then we have this wooden Zenith console TV down below. Everything that is on uh, from a VCR, DVD, Blu-ray player can go to either one of these TVs. The consoles can't though, however. It's everything on this side, TurboGrafx-16, Sega Genesis, Saturn, PS1, all that stuff is on an AV switch box, uh, the N64 and Dreamcast as well, and they go to this TV. Everything on this TV is like Gen 6 and, and beyond. It goes to these component switchers here. They don't make a component switch box big enough, at least that I can find, so we had to wire two of them together, and yeah, it's kind of a, kind of a unique deal. Everything here, though, is set up on these industrial uh, wide spaced out so that the plugs are not super close together on these power strips, but they're uh, aluminum cast uh, power strips. And so we aren't drawing any phantom energy when we're in here, everything gets shut down. So every every time we come in here, we fire things up and we shut everything down. You can't even turn stuff on when we're in here without flipping on those power switches. What's really tough about having a game room and also doing content is you gotta get screen cap. So all of these consoles fire up and work, but then we had to split the signal for all the consoles. It's really confusing, we'll dive deep into that in a different video, but it, it took us a while to set all this up, but it's so nice, you can just hit a button and boom, it's on the TV. Hit a button, boom, it's on the TV. Back behind, uh, we got some, some posters, um, stuff like that that was in our old game room as well. Got our little stereo here uh, that kind of feeds everything as well. It's a pretty awesome setup. Uh, we can, it's set up a lot like it was in the old game room, but we have a drop cord from every one of those switch boxes so that we can get screen capture. So you're getting uh, the AV signal or the component signal when you're on this side of the room. It feels like you're in a barcade, dude. It's so awesome. Play video games, watch wrestling, watch movies. We're watching a really bad horror movie right now. <laughs> George Clooney's in it though, so that'd be cool. Uh, above here, we got some more wrestling stuff. I love that ET is a part of it for some reason. We just do a lot of things because we think it's funny <laughs> and he's wearing a basketball hoop ring for some reasons because it's funny this side of the room we tried to keep the same vibe as the old game room just like modern and updated and dude i already mentioned it but the brick wallpaper behind everything just looks it looks so cool so cool All right, another cool thing that we uh, did when we had this game room built is, and you, you might not be able to see it, but there is a four-way power supply in the ceiling. So we could mount our softbox. It was such a pain in the ass in the old room. One, they were on the ground. It was a small room. So the tripods that they're on are in the way. You gotta move them around. When you live stream, you take them out. When you're done, you bring them back. It's a pain in the ass. So now it's just mounted into the ceiling and it's on a switch. And it's so freaking cool, so when we're not using it, you can just run over, hit the switch, and it's just off. It's so nice, out of sight, out of mind. And then right behind, it's kind of hard to see, but right behind the light, we got Mario, but Mario running for president. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, Mario. This is another thing that we thought was so stupid. And then we did it and we go, okay, then we gotta keep it. <laughs> it's just so dumb. We also have these uh, rotatable 360 degree rotation can lights. Moving over here, 
we got a bunch of more posters. We got the punch out one and the Castlevania one. Those are from the old game room. Those were behind us. Oh, we got this really cool Mario Strikers banner uh, from GameStop. It's a really like thick fabric uh, banner. So I thought that would look really cool down here. This is one of the first things we put up in this game room. It's badass. I love it. And it's just you walk in and you're like, hell yeah. Even though my favorite's the GameCube one, this still is badass. You still get the vibe of Strikers. And then we got the computer. As we're working across, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is the ceiling in here. We had it uh, painted flat black. I think it looks really sharp. It really just kind of ties the room together. And then we had uh, the floors in here. The reason we have this area rug is we did polished concrete floor. So it just feels like a dungeon arcade type of vibe down here. So over here is the backdrop you've seen in a few videos that we've already put out in this new space. This is badass because in the old game room, we only had one of these shelves. We have three now, so now this runs, I don't know, 10 feet long. It's so badass. We got all of our games in one spot, starting with NES and going all the way down to PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on the bottom in chronological order for the most part. So badass, dude. It's just like, oh, name a console, name a game? Oh, easy to find. In the old game room, games were everywhere. So it's so nice to have one spot, and it makes this awesome shelf at the top. We have all these CIB consoles, little knickknacks, Little wrestler figures. We got Freddy just hanging out. We got actually two Freddies hanging out. There's a lot that didn't make it in here. But yeah, this is where the games are. This is the seats. This is where Roberto sits. That's where I sit. This is uh, this is the filming area. But uh, it's nice to have access to all the games. And, and we have room to grow into this as well. You see a lot of front-facing cases. Those can easily be turned and you can fit five or six more games in those spots. So. Oh, and then also, we mentioned this in every game room tour, but the Crypt Keeper, another stupid thing that we did, a while ago. I was shocked that in the move, this didn't fall off. So we moved this poster and he stayed there. He stayed on the poster, hung out, and he's still there. And he's now he's just part of the game room. And then when we make our way across the thing, we get out of the retro space and more into the hangout area. All right, now we are out of the studio side. We're jumping out over into this kind of little hangout area. A little Red Bull light. We drink a lot of energy drinks, a lot of beer too. As we work across here, oh, I didn't mention this. The guy behind the camera, Robert, did all the trim work in here. So if, you, if you're looking at it, you're like, oh, that black trim is sweet. Well, he did that, uh, showed me some things along the way. We also put this uh, black shelf in here. Um, it's nothing fancy, we didn't even sand it. We just painted it flat black and uh, put that in there. So it's a kind of a kind of rugged. This is like really cool because it just feels open. Hang out, you can put chairs over here. We can roll our chairs over. We have folding chairs over here. But we just got a bunch of random knickknacks. You know, we got the Slim Jims that we actually got Slim Jims for it. Honey barbecue tastes like regular Slim Jim, okay? <laughs> it's dumb, dude. I don't taste any honey on it, but still eat them. Then you got the PS2 big boxes, light gun games on both sides, which is badass. A couple PS3 ones. A little House of the Dead shrine that we built. <laughs> you can't get over it. <laughs> you still don't taste any honey on it. <laughs> a little House of the Dead shrine here, if you will. Um, some really obscure stuff, like a promotional t-shirt in a VHS style box. It's pretty neat. And then we got this little uh, display here. These things fit perfectly. It's it's so nice when things just work together and come together when you don't even think about it. Like the Red Bull sign. We had to get Buzz's girlfriend, Wolf. We had to, that's her name. <laughs> her name is Wolf. We got to get her up, Tony Hawk board. And some WWF magazines. I know it's a game room tour, but big fan of wrestling. We got Vanilla Ice on a skateboard over here. I don't know, it's kind of crazy. We have extra chairs, kind of tucked away. We got my guitar down here. This is a window. It's like really nice so we can actually get fresh air in here because sometimes when you're in a game room, it gets a little rank, especially when you're eating those honey Slim Jims. <laughs> but it's nice we can open the window, especially when it's like becomes nice out we can. I kind of like how too, we came, we came into a bigger space and we have more space to do things, but we have less stuff in here. Like outside, we have a bunch of stuff that was in the old game room that we haven't brought in here. And I don't know if we're going to because I like how clean and simple this is. I don't like, I mean, it was super nice having shit everywhere, but it's kind of nice to just be able to be like breathe and like just have the wallpaper show and, you know, not have stuff stacked everywhere. We still get a lot of stuff in here. 
but it is nice. It just looks clean and crisp and it's so nice. You can just be put a drink here, play some modern stuff. But as we get over to this side, this is what I would call the modern side. If you guys have hung out um, in any of our live streams, we've, I think we've only streamed from this side so far. Kind of what I said for our setup over there applies over here, but this is the modern side. So we have two HDMI split boxes or splitter boxes and everything's labeled of what console is plugged into which one. Um, but we needed two, that's how many consoles we have. This wasn't in the old game room. This was in Wes's living room, a whole shelf he built, entertainment stand, 4K TV, finally have one, freaking badass. Two retro TVs on top, always playing something. I love how many screens are in here and how they're always on. It just feels so badass. Over here is mostly modern stuff or modded consoles. We have a modded GameCube, a modded Dreamcast, and a modded Saturn over here. The original stuff is over there. So all of that is running through HDMI. We have our Xbox One, our Xbox Series S, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Wii U, and all the mini consoles, Switch, maybe I'm missing some. All that is running to the Samsung 4K TV. Everything from the TV is wired through this stereo. So we've got our stereo set up down here. Um, we also have drop cords so we can get screen capture. We have got an upper HDMI drop, a lower HDMI drop, and then we just have a cord that we can hook anything into to get to the TV, like a laptop, a computer, another console, or whatever. And then behind this, and then also behind the retro side, is two splitters, or plug-in splitters. It's so nice, you just flip, flip, so then when we're not in here, we're not using power. It's super nice. It's just, it's so badass. We got a stereo over here. We got our record player in here. We got our vinyls in here. A couple TVs up top as well. This is kind of uh, the retro uh, arcade feel. We got wrestling going all the time. Uh, we got another TV here. It's a TV DVD player. Um, right now we're trying to watch a football game and it keeps going in and out. But still working some kinks out. But yeah, that is the modern side of the game room. Well, that is a wrap. Game room tour. Last game room tour we did in the old space. Did you know that was our 5,000 sub celebration? Well, I mean, we did the goodbye forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Room tour. Final tour. But yeah, yeah. The final tour, yeah. So this is kind of a, a full look at, at the new space. It's. I think you mentioned it uh, in one of your, your takes of it's ever changing, yes. but I, I, I really like where we're at and I don't see a lot of big time changes no, that need to be made. If anything, we'll put like a little bit small stuff on the wall here and there, yeah. but I like how clean it is. I like how smooth it is. I like how much room there is. Yeah. I like that we actually built it from scratch. Like, so we were gonna, we, we need to talk about this obviously because we built this room from scratch. Like literally this, this was just a part of a basement, no walls. The walls got built, power got ran, yeah. freaking, it was, that was a labor of love, it took months. Yeah, and it, it was built though knowing it was going to be a game room. Yeah, so that, that's a very yeah. unique thing yeah. because we have two circuits running this this room and there's uh, two outlets in every wall but yes. in places where you wouldn't be able to see them, it's just where we need it. And there, there's actually one built into the game shelf that runs these lights yes. behind here. So when yeah. we when we put the shelves up, we cut a hole in the back of the shelf. We actually had to move the outlet. Good thing I know how to do that. We move the outlet over, cut a hole. Mm -hmm. So it is nice. So we, we do got a power strip plugged into it, but it's like, if we need more power, but it's so nice. And the, every one is a four banger. Yeah. So it's like, yep. we got so much room for power. Plus, once the walls were done, then we wallpapered it. That took a few weeks. That that was a pain in the that ass. That was the worst oh part of this. Oh my God. You did most of it by yourself because you got in a rhythm. Yeah. Um, and then I was working on the trim. We did all the trim ourselves, the baseboard, the top part, the side things, the shelf. We, we even did the window and door trim, which is badass because I used to be a carpenter. So I was like, I, I, know, how to, I know how to do this. I can yeah. do this. And it, it was really nice. And then, so it's like, it feels like, oh, we put our sweat, tears, and blood into this game yeah. room, and then built it. Yep. Like, it was like, it's so nice. And when we walk in here, it's like, let's go. Yeah, it it's- feels so <clears throat> badass. I, I'd say the last, like, maybe week or two has been the first kind of point in time where it's kind of like, <sighs> relaxing, yes. Now we can play games. Yes. Um, and that's what this whole thing's all about. But it, it, was, uh, it was a lot of work. Just not only boxing everything up, moving it, but the build, the whole nine yards. Yeah, it but, took, I mean, it's been a work in progress for, 
I don't know, you, you were starting to get a contractor probably last summer, yeah, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's been going on for a long time. It feels so nice to finally be done ish done ish as yeah. much as we can be it feels just so cool i love it let us know if you guys want to see deep dives into anything that we yeah. talked about because we i mean we kind of did it fast and we're idiots so we probably didn't mention some things and um yeah uh, i think some folks will want to get maybe more into that how do you hook up your your systems and all that stuff but there's a lot of people that maybe don't so i didn't want to go too far into the weeds yeah was glazed over uh, yeah. that, that section, but we may do a deep dive on it if you want to yeah. see it. So. And then the computer and all that, it's just, and yeah. it feels so nice to be able to be like, okay, here we are, freaking season two is off and running. Yeah, only so. took us five and a half years to get to <laughs> season two, but hey. But speaking of that, beer reviews are back. We didn't do them for a long time, but yeah. we're doing them. 2024 is the year of the beer. Yeah. It's <laughs> not the year of the bear, the year of the beer. Uh, today we're drinking Swarm yeah. by Exile. This is a golden ale. Exile is a local brewery. <laughs> what? I just... <laughs> oh yeah, hey, Abe Lincoln. Yeah, I did want to bring this up because <laughs> this is his home now, for, yeah. for now. He's been in every video since we'd started in here. Yeah, I don't really know. He why. always our manager, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> and if you've been around for a while, you know all about him. Yeah. <laughs> and he keeps us honest. Mis yeah, Mr. Manager keeps us honest, honest yeah. Abe. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this brew uh, from Exile. <laughs> It's a golden ale. In XL, I honestly, I haven't been a fan. They haven't been putting out anything that's like, oh, this blows my mind. And this isn't blowing my mind either, but I do like this. Yeah, it's an easy drinker. I, I'm with you. I think they used to be, in my opinion, one of the better breweries in Des Moines. But not so much anymore. Their restaurant is better than their beer. Yeah, um, their food's really good. The, the beer isn't like anything offensive. It's just they don't do anything unique, it feels like, anymore. And then, <clears throat> little little gripe I have with, with them is they got rid of their best beer. One of their flagships, it was called Hannah, and it was yeah, a Hesselweizen. So, that, that beer was so good. It was it by far and away the best beer they were brewing. They, they've got a good lager. They've got all their IPAs are just kind of magoo. Not, not, they, and they used to have really great sours, and that's kind of just kind of plateaued. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. They, um, I feel like they're, they become a brewery. I mean, I know that they're local, but I feel like they become a brewery for the masses and yeah. not for craft beer fans. Yeah. Which I guess makes sense as you also have a restaurant. So more, I, I think a lot, like the casual person would like their beers. Yeah. But for somebody that's a craft beer fan, I'm like, oh, I want something. Yeah. Try, be experimental, you yeah, know? Yeah, you, you don't go in there and you're not, again, none of their beers are offensive. It's just very just vanilla, middle of the road. And there are so many better breweries in Des Moines yes. than, than having but to it, go there. But, but it is nice to go there and get food and yeah. then have like a one of their IPAs. And But the Swarm, I, I do like this. I've ordered this a few times when I'm out at yeah. restaurants. Um, it's a nice, if you don't, if you just want a nice easy drinker, like if you're eating dinner or having a meal or just something that's, you can sip on while doing other things. Yeah. This is a great beer for that. Like it's not it anything crazy. It's just a nice easy sipper, yeah. you know? Yeah. I great totally agree. on a hot summer day. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I'd be looking forward to some hot summer weather. Yeah, I'm it has been crazy here in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, but anyway, we appreciate you guys hanging out, taking a look at the, the new game room. Hopefully we didn't bore you to death, but gave you enough information about how things are rolling. You already mentioned it, but in the comments, let us know any other questions you have um, or if there's a specific thing you want us to do a deep dive on. Um, because I'm sure there's somebody watching that's got a little game room or a game space or whatever they're doing. And they're like, shit, how did, how did what's the best way to set that up? We can, we can tell you what our opinion is yeah, the best way to do it, or how we do it. There's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. So. Yeah, a thousand ways to skin a cat, I think. That's yeah, what they say. Like, allegedly, yeah. yeah. That's all. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of skinning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, we appreciate you tuning in and subscribing to the channel. We'll catch you on the next episode of Gaming Off the Grid.